I think storm mode is something that a lot of weather enthusiasts struggle with because you're trying to piece together, like you know what creates a supercell, right? Like really good shear, you can even tell the hodograph shape, but a line forms, like what is that? What's up with that? Well, we're gonna talk about it because even though the environment looks like it will support a supercell, doesn't mean it's going to be supercells today. So let's hop in right now. I have an overall thesis statement about storm mode, and that is that all things lead to linear. Storms want to travel with friends. They don't like being alone. They, they don't, that, that isolation is just like, it's not what they like. Some days, some days storms do say isolated, but my theory is, is that it doesn't mean that they didn't want to have friends. It just means they ran out of time to find friends. Like those days where a storm is isolated and dies by itself. Well, had it kept going for just a little bit longer, we probably would have had a little bit of a Boeing segment, a cluster, something like that. So just so you know, as we're framing the rest of this video, my theory about everything is that with time on this day, storms are going to be more crowded. It's just like, it, it's generally true. Some days it's not, but you, it just, it, it, it pays to think that way in terms of think, thinking about what storms are going to be the strongest, or in a storm chaser's case, what storm's gonna be the prettiest? Like, like what, what's gonna make the best pictures or the best video? It's all important when you're considering all that. So with that said, let's get into five different points that I look for, things, you know. So the first thing I'm looking for when trying to determine storm mode is just the hodograph shape. Like, does this day, does the wind shear actually support supercells because that's what i'm looking for when i am storm chasing i am looking for supercells most specifically isolated supercells so that's what i'm looking for to start like i'm looking for that and quite honestly like a supercell photograph it looks something like this and that's you know curvature in the low levels good venting aloft that's what you're looking for for supercells now there is so much more to, to photographs and like how they work etc there is a card coming up right now and that is going to tell you a lot more if you are curious about like what photograph shapes lead to what check out that video right after you watch this one you're not going to be sorry so the next thing i'm looking for are the shear vectors and by that i mean how they are interacting with the boundary that is initiating storms this is super important because if you don't understand this part it, it it's going to blow your mind when a day that has great shear otherwise ends linear, like goes instantly linear. And that's usually because the shear vector is parallel to the initiating boundary. Now, first off, how do you find the shear vector? Well, the hodograph, let's go to the hodograph. You start at zero, wherever the surface wind is, 0.1. You go all the way around the hodograph to six. Find six on the hodograph. That's six kilometers. That is your zero to six kilometer shear vector if you draw a line straight to it from zero to six. That's your shear vector. Now, if you go onto a model map of the day and you look at it and you see like the shear vector's this and the boundary's this, those storms are going to want to go linear really fast. They're going to crowd up. It's going to be a mess. If your boundary is like this and your shear vector is like this, if it is perpendicular, oh my gosh, prepare. We've got an isolated storm mode coming up at least for a while. We're going to have isolated storms. So the next thing that kind of relates to wind shear, but not really because it just, it kind of deals with the strength of the jet coming out is how much lift you have. If you have just this huge system with tons and tons and tons of lift, it doesn't matter what anything else is doing. It doesn't matter your shear vector, doesn't matter anything. Those things are gonna be crowded, they're gonna be linear. It, it doesn't matter. Like a lot of forcing means a lot of storms. It's, it's that simple. Also, it depends on what kind of a boundary you have too, because this is important. If you have a cold front crashing south, as I've said in previous videos, that thing's going linear. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter shear vector, doesn't matter anything. You're gonna go linear because there's a lot of forcing. It's forcing that moist air up. It's gonna be linear. Like, sorry, that's just how it works. So that's why I stay away from crashing cold fronts. But 
There are scenarios where there's like a slight to moderate amount of forcing coming over the dry line that just works really well. And we're gonna talk about the next factor, which kind of plays hand in hand with this, that really kind of inf would inform a good chase strategy. So the next thing is the cap. Like, this is important because how strong is that cap? That layer of warm, dry air aloft, which loves to stop storms from forming. If you've got a very strong cap and not a lot of uh, forcing, you're gonna have a hard time getting any storms, much less a lot of storms. Like those are days that you can kind of be like, okay, this makes sense, right? Like there's, there's only gonna be a few storms that's, you know, those kind of days make sense. So the cap and forcing are kind of playing like a, this careful balance, like moderate cap, moderate forcing, probably the most ideal because you're gonna get a lot more storms that way, but they're gonna tend to be isolated depending on the shear vector. Yep. They all play into each other. All of these things are playing into each other. It's, it's such a balance. So like a strong cap, you're, you're gonna end up more isolated no matter what. Like, like strong cap, weaker-ish forcing, you know, or small compact area forcing, all of this matters because it, 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 too much of one or the other linear, not enough of one or the other, no storms. Like it's all a careful balancing act and you have to keep all these things in mind. They're all important. Here's the thing, you can look at three o'clock and the shear vector could be looking one way with the cap looking another way with the forcing being what it is. But at seven o'clock, the shear vector will have changed, the cap will have changed, the boundaries will have changed, and it's different. <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you, it adds complication because you, you, you've done all this, you've, you've done the calculations, but then you're like, oh wait, at three o'clock it's this way, at seven o'clock it's this way. So this is like a completely different environment. A lot of times uh, you're gonna have a situation where because of like the low level jet increasing forcing, you're gonna have increased forcing toward the evening. You're gonna have a strengthening cap though, but you might have like the boundaries moving back and forth. Like a dry line tends to move east during the day, retreats back west during the night. So that forcing's gone. So yes, it's complicated. There are so many layers that I, ugh, it's like an onion, right? Like the more you peel back, the more layers there are. There's so much to this. You need to think like with all these factors in mind, Where's the storm going to be isolated? Where are we going to get an isolated supercell that can produce a tornado? So it's all these things in tandem. It's all these things in balance. Keep that in mind. You're, you're going to be okay. Listen, I know this is complicated, but with practice, you're going to get better. You're going to get better. Take a look at previous examples. Take a look at the things I said, find other days and see how that worked out. You're going to be okay. Also, subscribe to this channel. If you made it this far, you found this video helpful, you wanna to subscribe to this channel. Check out our playlist for models and photographs. Those two boxes are coming up very soon, right here at the end of this video. You'll wanna check those out. Lots of learning to still be done. And hey, remember, weather's complicated. It's hard, but it's beautiful. It's amazing, it's intriguing, it's fascinating. And it's for you, it's for everybody. We'll see you next time.